words have, have meaning. I think that you know most of us today we're, we're feeling it every time we flip on Facebook, or you can't even hit the the home button on your new iOS without having the a couple offensive words or whatever it is pop up there and, and, and just used to divide or to confuse or to anger you. And as, as quickly as we reach those emotions, we tend to forget on the other side how words can be used to inspire, motivate, and drive. Um, there were three s specific words that have changed the direction of my life. Empathy, uh, forgiveness, and quixotic. Uh, I didn't even know what it was. I had to look it up. It's an adjective. Uh, and it means foolishly impractical in the pursuit of ideals marked by rash, lofty, romantic ideas and extravagantly chivalrous action. Um, I still couldn't even use the word in a sentence yet, uh, so I had to go to the synonyms, and it's idealistic, romantic, visionary, impossible. And I thought about all of the, all of the moments in my life that had led me to this point to where one of the most dominant business and financial publications wrote about our business in a manner that was described as quixotic and how we would fail. And it, it was missing something. This, this definition was missing a synonym, and it's American. Hey, GW. Uh, I know it's, it's Christmas. It's kind of cold out. But, you know, this whole paddling across the Delaware to kill a whole bunch of drunk Germans, uh, it, it sounds really like a good idea, and it might actually change the face of our nation. But, you know, it's probably a little bit over the top right now. <laughs> hey, JFK, you know the Russians? They've got this space race thing in the bag. They've already got Sputnik up. They've got an astronaut in space. You know, it, you know, we're years behind. It would cost us you know, billions of dollars. And although it would probably be a benchmark on our species to be the first people to touch the moon, it's probably impossible at this point. I mean, those are the examples that I grew up witnessing. People... Americans that believed in accomplishing the impossible, no matter how hard or how challenging it was. And uh, you could be anything that you wanted to be, and all I wanted to be was an airborne ranger. I will live the life of guts and danger. Right? Um, and specifically, I wanted to go to the 75th Ranger Regiment, uh, be surrounded by men uh, that were known for completing the impossible. The most difficult missions our, our nation would ask of our service members always went to the Rangers. And so I went through the academy, I uh, went through officer basic, went through Ranger school, my first conventional unit. And uh, summer of 2003, I ended up at 2nd Ranger Battalion. A few short months afterwards, uh, I ended up in the mountains of Afghanistan in the middle of winter, and our job was to go find the nastiest, meanest, fundamentalist, radicalist terrorists uh, that were hanging out in the winter safe havens up in the mountains where they think that we couldn't get them. So we went and we got them. <clears throat> um, thank you. Um, it's, it's, we went so far, all we had was each other. Right? That was it. Just a bunch of Americans that believed that we could do the, the most impossible, difficult missions that were asked of us. And when we went there, we found an enemy that was much different. Um, we saw a poverty that unless you've seen it firsthand, you cannot possibly imagine it. No educational systems, no opportunity for employment, lack of access to clean water, food. It, any one of those situations in any culture or, or country would be devastating, but when you put them all together, it creates a poverty that's so deep that if you were to describe a simple solution to fix it, you, you'd be called crazy. Um, so I'd left the military in 2006 after three deployments to Afghanistan and one deployment to Iraq. Uh, ended up working for a medical company that was putting medical clinics in developing nations around the world, and I kept seeing one type of person who was making this change in this area. The one act, or the series of acts that was changing this poverty, and it was entrepreneurs. All right, these are people that had no choice. When push came to shove, they hustled. They saw a problem. They took what they had. They worked really hard. They solved it. They reinvested. They grew. They kept doing that over and over, all with the intent of being able to put shelter over themselves or their family so their kids could go to school. That way they could have jobs, they have access to clean water and food. And this was the person who all across the world in developing nations is making that positive change. It was entrepreneurs. So I was in Afghanistan, I was thinking to myself, you know, why aren't we investing more into this guy as a nation? Why do we continue to send 
armored cars and vehicles and soldiers and aircraft, and why don't we just invest in entrepreneurship? And as I'm having these questions, as of being guided or being led, I ended up in a combat boot factory in Kabul, Afghanistan, and it was 300 people working, each supporting five to 13 family members. And because it was creating so much opportunity and so much economy, nothing ever happened to that factory. You weren't going to attack that factory. Nobody was going to let anything happen to it. And uh, I was in this factory, and I looked down on this table, and here's this combat boot sole with a flip-flop thong punched through it. And I picked it up, and it was ugly and cool. And I said, man, Americans would buy that. <laughs> Flip-flops made in a combat boot factory in Afghanistan to employ people to create this opportunity. And, uh, and so we started a company, Combat Flip-Flops. Uh, Business, not bullets. That's our mindset. That's what we think we can do. We can use our, our nation's most powerful tool, which is our economy, to affect um, developing nations in a positive, sustainable way. And you know, as with everything, we came out with this idea, this really cool design, but you have to take it that extra, extra mile because there's no traffic jam on the extra mile. So you know, what do we want to do to really affect these areas um, that are being oppressed by radicals is you know, we educate women. It's a really simple solution. If you educate a woman, you educate a family. An educated mother will not allow her children to be radicalized. If we invest in these women now, in a generation, one decade or two decades, we will end the problem of radicalism because we will have, we will have drained the swamp of their, um, of their recruitment base. They will not be able to go and find those poor kids begging on the street and bring them in, give them food and shelter because those kids are going to be in school and they're going to have jobs. And it all starts by educating women. And it was an idea that was so popular that right out of the gate, we sold thousands of pairs of flip-flops. And then the failure started happening. Uh, border closure to Afghanistan, our first factory closed. Uh, our first delivery was late, so my brother and I flew to Afghanistan to find out it was 100% fail because our material supplier pulled a bait and switch on us. Opened the doors up, gave away thousands of pairs of flip-flops. Uh, bounced around Kabul for a few more days, found another factory that wanted to work with us. And without telling my wife, I love you, uh, I purchased 4,000 pair of flip-flops on my personal credit card for raw materials. Um, flew home, uh, broke the news, suffered immensely. <laughs> and then uh, as we're getting ready to, to send the materials to Afghanistan to, to have them assembled into footwear, we get a call from our factory, hey, that factory had closed. So here we are, you know, months late on delivery, thousands of pairs of footwear down, got a container full of raw materials, and what do you do? Well, you know, we don't know how to fail. In the veteran community, when you run into an obstacle, there's, there's two things you do. You either breach or you bypass, because nothing is stopping you from getting to the X, to that objective. Um, we saw flip-flops made in Afghanistan. So it didn't look that hard, so we sent the container to my house, and we built a gorilla flip-flop factory in my garage. And with the help of other veteran friends and family, over between you know, February and April of 2013, we made roughly 4,000 pair of flip-flops in our, in our garage, in our house. And it, this is where the, the Wall Street Journal comes in. Um, they'd heard about our idea. They'd heard about all of our failures. And the, the title of it is an Afghan business tale headline, subheadline, uh, world's toughest startup environment, add army veterans, bang head against the wall. Right? This is, this is the Wall Street Journal describing how our business is absolutely going to fail, but we don't know how to fail. Veterans, we don't. We, we've been known to see the impossible, plan against it, and execute, lead people to that conclusion. And so you know, we led a people, a, a group, a community, we call our customers the unarmed forces, people who believe in our idea. You know, business is better than bullets. You know, Women should be educated. You know, we can make a sustainable, peaceful change. We ended up leading so many people that we got enough attention that we got on Shark Tank. You know, got a deal with three sharks, working with Mark Cuban, we're Mark Cuban company. We're going 500%. You know, we now have you know, five employees. We are going to be delivering to some of the biggest retailers in America by next spring of 17. Year to date, we've put over 162 girls in school for a year. We've cleared over 5,000 square meters of landmines and supported tons of other veteran charities. Thank you. So, I mean, what's, what's the point of this story is if a bunch of hippie looking rangers um, can make it in business with a flip-flop company out of Afghanistan, you know, think about what you guys can do. 
right? For, for you employers out there, I hope you understand what you're getting when you hire a veteran because you're getting people that believe in accomplishing problems. They believe in leadership. They believe in beating the impossible. They're quixotic. So thank you very much, everybody. Thank you.